Hello everyone, and welcome back to Maytech. Today we are going to do a comparison video between the 20 watt X Tool S1 and the 20 watt We Create Vision. And towards the end of the video, we are also going to do some tests where we compare both the accuracy of these machines and the detail of them. So make sure you stick around for that. Just before we get into this video, if you guys can please subscribe to the channel and help us grow, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, let's get into this. So before we get into these machines themselves, we should talk a little bit about the companies that are behind these machines. Xtool over here has been around for quite a while. They're kind of like the old pros in the game. They not only make diode lasers now, but they've also branched off into other machines like CO2 lasers and fiber lasers. And they of course make a variety of accessories for all their machines. WeCreate is a relatively new player in the game. Right now I believe they only have the 20 and 40 watt machines. But despite being relatively new, their machines have become quite popular. As we dig into the machines themselves, I'm going to focus on the differences between the two machines. The first area I think most people will notice is the work area of these two machines. The Xtool S1 has a noticeably larger work area of 19.6 by 13, while the WeCreate ranks in at 16.5 by 11.4. So if I overlap these two boards, which represent the work area of each machine, you'll see that the S1 offers you considerably more real estate to work with. Now this extra workspace may or may not matter depending on the types of projects you'll be doing, but it's definitely something you should consider. And just as a side note, both companies do offer a pass-through feeder for their machines, which greatly extends the working length of each machine. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the working depth of each machine. I'll be using these measured boards here to represent the depth of each machine. Because the WeCreate Vision is a self-rising machine, it does have a considerable working depth of 5.5 inches. This makes it deep enough to use the rotary attachment with most tumblers. The Xtool S1, on the other hand, only offers you a working depth of 1.7 inches stock. This may not seem very deep compared to the WeCreate, but if you're only planning to be working on sheet goods like plywoods or MDF, this is more than adequate. Now, if you do want to be using the S1 for deeper projects or for rotary jobs, they do offer an add-on riser base, which significantly increases the working depth of their machine from 1.7 inches to 5.3 inches, almost equaling the depth of the WeCreate. Let's now look at the autofocus system of each machine. The S1 offers a mechanical autofocus system with a probe that actually reaches down and touches your working surface, where the WeCreate offers an optical autofocus system where the whole top of the machine lowers itself to get into focus. While I did find both systems to be reliable and accurate, the mechanical autofocus system on the S1 is considerably quicker than the optical system on the Vision. We'll now move on to look at the beds of each machine. The Xtool S1 comes with this removable honeycomb bed. They also provide these magnetic hold downs here, which make it easy to keep light or warped material in place. Personally, I prefer to work with these honeycomb beds for most projects, but it should be noted that honeycomb beds do cause more laser flashback than some other options. WeCreate has gone for a removable knife bed for their machine, which you can see easily pops out in two pieces. Knife beds can be great for when you're cutting out materials as they produce less flashback, but they can also be difficult to attach materials to them, which can make projects that need holding down a pain to work with. A feature that is unique to Xtool machines is that they offer fire detection and fire control on their machines. What you're looking at here is one of the five flame sensors on the S1. If it detects a flame, it will automatically shut your machine off. 
Xduel also offers this refillable fire extinguisher accessory, which will put out any fire inside your machine after one is detected. At the time of making this video, WeCreate does not offer any sort of fire detection systems for their machines. Let's now move on to modules. Xtool offers four interchangeable modules for their S1 machine. Available is a 2 watt infrared module for working with metals and a 10 watt, 20 watt and 40 watt module in their regular laser spectrum. With the 10 watt being the best for engraving applications, the 40 the best for cutting and the 20 a good compromise between the two. These modules are relatively easy to change out by simply removing the two screws at the top and then removing the vacuum hose and the cable on the side. You can then reinstall the new module in the reverse way that you removed the previous one. I've already done a previous video on installing the IR module on the S1 and its uses, so if you're interested in that, I will have a link in the description below. At the current time, the only add-on module we create offers is the 2 watt infrared module. It also does seem the procedure to install this module is a bit more complicated than it is on the Xtool S1. WeCreate does offer their machines in both a 20 watt and 40 watt flavor, but the laser modules within the machines are not interchangeable. So you'll want to be sure to buy the machine that fits your needs to start if you're going the WeCreate route. Another feature I found unique to Xtool is their ability to laser curved surfaces. By selecting the start and end point of your curved surface, the S1 will then go along and measure this curved surface at different points using the autofocus as a touch probe. When it's done, it'll give you this 3D mesh that it's made of your curved surface that you can make adjustments to. Once you're happy with the 3D mesh it's provided with you, you can go ahead and laser your image onto the curved surface. Here, for example, I'm using the side of an apple wood log. The laser module will then follow the curve of the surface, keeping the laser in focus and removing any distortion from the curves. Here's the results. It's actually a quite neat effect that I have plans for in the future. You can of course use this feature to laser bowls and dishes, which is what it's more commonly used for. Let's move on to positioning systems. The X2 S1 uses a system where you have to mark the outside of an object using the crosshairs on the laser head, while the WeCreate Vision uses a camera mounted on the center of the lid. Both these systems have their advantages and disadvantages, and we are going to go ahead and test both these systems for accuracy. We'll be doing this by centering a circle onto these plywood rounds I've cut out on each machine, and then engraving the circle onto the plywood rounds to see how accurate each machine is. With the S1, you do have to go into the pinpoint marking area of their software, select the shape you want to mark, and then go into the marking procedure. In our example of using a circle, we will need to mark three points along the edge. After we position each point, we will have to push the button on the machine for it to register into the software. After you've done that, you should see the Xtool software registering a circle. Once you have your circle, you can now leave the marketing portion of the software and you will now see that there is a circle on the canvas of your workspace. We're now going to go ahead and create a circle of 140 millimeters. We will then center it as accurately as possible within the mark circle that we previously made. Now that it's centered, I'm going to go ahead and engrave the results onto the plywood circle. Moving on to the WeCreate, all we simply need to do is place the plywood circle onto the bed of the machine and hit refresh in the software. This will give us an image of our disc on the bed, allowing us to overlay the circle we want to engrave onto the image. Again, once I got it centered to my liking, I went ahead and ran the engraving process. So here are the results. 
First up, we have the Xtools Pinpoint Positioning System. And as you can see, it's pretty much dead on. This is about as accurate of a positioning system as I've found on any laser. With the weak rate positioning, you could see that the circle is slightly off. This is actually very common with any camera positioning system. And the extent of just how much the positioning is off will typically depend where on the bed the item is placed. So if you are using a camera, you will want to make sure to double check your positioning with framing. And even though the Vision's positioning system is slightly off, it's still the most accurate camera system that I've used on a laser. So just to recap, the X-Tools pinpoint positioning system does take multiple steps, but is very accurate. While WeCreate's camera system is quick and easy to use, but lacks some accuracy. The accuracy of the pinpoint positioning system has come in extremely handy when I'm doing detailed work. And this has been particularly true when I receive orders for custom engravings onto knife blades. With these types of projects, you only get one shot to get it right the first time. So you definitely want to make sure that the laser is going to engrave exactly where you want it. Because in these situations, it'll end up a costly mistake that you can't fix. Now let's run some quick tests to test both the accuracy of engraving and the cut capabilities of each machine. First, we're going to test engraving an image on some 8 inch Baltic birch plywood. Next, we'll test engraving an image onto painted tile. And last up, we'll test cutting some shapes into quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. To start, we're going to use the x 2 s one to engrave the image of this cow onto the Baltic birch plywood. For settings, we'll be using a power of 100, a speed of 175, the bitmap mode set to grayscale, and we'll have the lines per centimeter set at 90. We'll be then cutting this image out at a power of 100 and a speed of 7. We will do the exact same image on the WeCreate using the exact same settings as we used on the X-Tool. Here we have the finished engravings with the X tool on the left and the WeCreate on the right. As you can see, the results turned out great with both machines. The color tone of the engraving seems to vary slightly between the machines, and I'm going to assume that's because they both use slightly different laser spectrums. The engraving quality that either of these machines produces on wood is top notch and is certainly a lot better than the results that I get from my CO2 laser machines. Let's now jump over to engraving the painted tiles. We'll once again start with the S1. And the first thing we want to do is to invert the image, as we'll be using the laser to remove the dark paint to show the light tile underneath. We'll be engraving this tile at a power of 100 and a speed of 150. The bitmap mode will be set to grayscale and we'll have the lines per centimeter set to 120. And we will of course be using the same settings on the WeCreate Vision. Once again, both machines provided great results with the X tool here on the left and the tile done on the WeCreate Vision on the right. I did notice that the tile done on the Vision is slightly lighter, and I'm gonna assume once again that that's due to the slight difference in spectrums. Engraving painted tile has become very popular because of the type of detail and effect you get from it, and both of these machines do an excellent job on tile. For the last test, We'll be cutting these shapes out of the quarter inch plywood. The X2 S1 will once again be up the bat first. We'll be using a power setting of 100, a speed of 3, and we'll be doing one pass. And we'll be running the exact same shapes with the same settings on the weak rate vision.
As you can see, both machines had no problem cutting these shapes out. With the X tool examples, once again here on the left, and the WeCreate shapes here on the right. Both machines here provided relatively clean edge cuts. These results are about as good as can be expected from a diode laser machines of 20 watts. Now I have cut thicker material on both machines, but I have found that quarter inch material is about the thickest you can cut on most laser cutters while still maintaining a clean cut. Anything thicker than a quarter inch is when I'll move up to my CNC machine. So lastly, you're probably going to wonder why I haven't done any price comparisons on these machines. And that's because I have constantly seen these machines going on sale. So any prices I give you right now will probably be irrelevant relatively quick. So you'll want to make sure you head on to the manufacturer's websites, check out the prices and also check out any sales they're having. So that's it for this video guys. If you have any questions about these two machines, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. I will get to them as quick as possible. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please make sure to do so. All right, we will see you again next time.